Hi, I'm Micah. Thank you for joining us in the time of devotion here today. And I always enjoy starting my day with a time of prayer, a time in the scripture, the word of God. And I find that when I do so, my day is generally better. And I usually find that whatever I've read that day in the scripture really benefits my life. And I believe that Proverbs chapter 6, verses 23 and 24 are some scriptures that can benefit our life today. The scripture says this, for the commandment is a lamp and the law a light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life to keep you from the evil woman, from the flattering tongue of a seductress. Now, before we go any further, I want to just remind us that this is being written from a male's point of view. Okay, a man's writing this and he, he's talking about a woman and he's talking about a seductress. But this is this is goes beyond the concept of gender. And so this is really dealing with anything that can pull you away from your focus. And so I, I want to make sure we get that so that we can understand the overarching uh, message of this passage of scripture to us. So he's talking about commandments and he's talking about laws. He's talking about a lamp and he's talking about a light. And, and that can be confusing. And so I have here a, a flashlight. And this flashlight, you know, just does what a flashlight does. We all know this. <clears throat> but it is, it, it, in this case, we're going to use it to illustrate a commandment, which is going to be this outside lamp. Okay? And then the, the law, which is illustrated by this internal light. And so what he's saying here that the commandment, the commandment is the thing that gives structure to something. The law is the thing that gives direction or, or illumination to something. The law teaches us, the Bible says. In the New Testament, it says that we know what sin is because the law lets us know what sin is versus what righteousness is. The commandment is the carrier of the law. So this flashlight body right here is the commandment, if you will. It's the carrier of the law. And so he's saying that when, when someone loves you, your mother, your father, somebody that has a lot of influence in your life, maybe it's a boss or a teacher, could be a pastor or a mentor, then th those people may give commandments uh, to your world. They may say, hey, you need to always do this or you should never do that. And what that's doing is giving structure to your world. If you will allow them to talk to you this way, and if you will receive it from them this way, then it, it provides structure in your life. And then the law gives light. The law is, is the light that is within the concept of and the structure of the lamp. And so the, the, uh, the unique thing here, and the, the reality is that, that without this, this lamp, inside this flashlight, the flashlight is useless. But if the, if the light doesn't have the structure of the commandment, then the light just goes everywhere. It's not focused. And so if you take this little beam of light right here and you focus it, then it really gives a, a, a powerful uh, revelation as to where you're going, where you're walking, and what you're seeing in the dark. But if you take that same little bitty light and you don't put any structure around it. It just goes everywhere. And ultimately, it lights very, very little. And you can't see very much at all. So there's what the writer is saying here in Proverbs is that those who love you, they bring focus to the law in your life. They, they apply a very broad and far-reaching law, and they focus it in on your life just like this flashlight focuses this beam of light to wherever it's pointed. And that's what the law and that's what the commandments from those who love you do in your world. But then he said, reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So instruction tells you what's right and what's wrong. Reproofs are corrective measures. They're the things that push you to the right or to the left. They're the things that say, yeah, don't ever do that again. Or, or yes, do this again. Or, or you should always do this again. And so reproofs are the thing that keep pushing you back into the lines of the instruction. And it says it's a way of life. So we're not ever to get out of that. As long as we live from the day we're born to the day we die, we should always be operating in the reproofs of instruction. The, the instructions are the guidelines for life. And we can 
push up against them at times. And maybe it's an issue of, uh, you know, something goes wrong at work. And so we want to lie about it. Or there's an issue within our family. And so lying about where we were or what we were doing or who we were talking to just seems easier. And yet the reproof says, no, don't lie. No, get it right. No, walk in the lines. No, do what you do what is right because it's right. And reproof means that somebody has the ability to speak that into our world and to push us back into alignment. With, with children, it's often the parents. Hey, son. Hey, daughter. Get it right. Sometimes with spouses, it's, it's with one another where uh, the wife says, you know, honey, I really think that you need to do it this way because if you do it that way, it's not really going to be a benefit to you or to those that you love. And it could be the other way around. Sometimes uh, the wife, the husband will say to the wife, hey, I, I think the way that you're handling that needs to be corrected. Now, pride within every single one of us says, hey, get out of here. I'm a full grown person or I'm a, I am my own person. I can do what I want, how I want. And yes, that is true. You are. But reproofs of instruction are a way of life. Reproofs for no reason is abuse. Reproofs for instruction helps us to walk right and to walk in a focused manner so that we can get from here to there in the most expedient way and be the better for it in the end. But then he says this, this reproof of instruction or a way of life for a purpose. It's to keep you from the evil woman, from the flattering tongue of the seductress. The evil woman is anything that distracts you from walking on the consistent path you're on. It's it's that that thing out there in your life that just keeps calling to you that you know it's not going to help you on your way. It's not going to help you achieve a goal. And the seductress, it, it, it's saying here, and it's using very sexual language, but it doesn't have to be sexual at all. The seductress could be a piece of cake. The the seductress could be. Uh, cheese puffs that the seductress could you're, you're out here trying to lose weight and and the cheese puffs on the Kroger shelf or on the Costco shelf are calling your name it could be anything it could be gaming where this it's a seductress to you you know that you need to be putting time in at work but yet you keep finding yourself thinking about that game system or that new uh, game or that new level that you're on uh, you the seductress can be anything that keeps pulling you from the path that you're on. It keeps pulling at you to leave your area of commitment. It, it, it seduces you to violate your vows. Things like this. I'll be there at five o'clock, but five o'clock rolls around and you're still playing the game. Or five o'clock rolls around and, you know, you just stop for a, a cup of coffee or you stop for your cheese puffs or whatever it is in your particular world. Uh, it, the, the thing starts pulling you away from your vows. We, in some instances, following the seductress is sinful. In other situations, it's not sinful. But in every situation, it's costly. We know that if, if someone uh, commits adultery, cheats on their spouse, that, that typically, even though it's not considered, quote, wrong or ungodly by the majority of the world, it's always considered negative by society. No one says, oh, they were cheating on their wife, they were cheating on their husband. Oh, that's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that. Most people say, no, if you committed in, in marriage, then you shouldn't be sleeping around on your husband or your wife. And, and that's just a generally good, good rule of thumb in life. As Christians, we know that it's not just a generally good rule of thumb. It's, it's righteousness before God to keep your marriage vows intact. But here's the thing. The seductress isn't always about sinful things. Sometimes it's not sinful. It's the cheese puffs. It's, there's nothing sinful about cheese puffs. It's the, the cake. It's the, the coffee. It's the game. There's nothing inherently sinful about gaming. But it always costs something. It costs something, one, in distraction from the true purpose of your life. It costs something, two, for the unintended offspring. How many, how many people are in this world today that do not know their father because their father enjoyed a moment of pleasure with their mother and left their mother there to deal with the unintended offspring. There is a cost 
And not only for the mother, but now for a child and the offspring, the, 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 the production of the thing that was never intended. And it was never intended to be a lasting situation. It was always just, just a seductive moment that caused us to go in a different direction. So, so now we have 15 levels up in the game, but we've lost our job. And you think I'm kidding about that. I've actually walked through that situation with people that I've had the privilege of pastoring. You, you, you have the situation where you've been on the right path and something happens and you eat a whole, a whole jug of, of cheese puffs and suddenly you've gained 15 pounds and, and the moral hit that you take is, is severe. It costs something for the offspring of the true purpose as well. The unintended offspring are having, uh, are, are struggling with this, but also the offspring of the true purpose. The, the, the children of those who now have a sibling that they don't really know. They, they, they have a, they have something, they're connected to something for a long time and maybe for a lifetime that they are, they, they have no real bond with. It's an unintended offspring mingling with an intended offspring. And it just gets messy. And it costs something in creative efforts. Because the more scattered you are, the less focused you are. And the whole point of the commandment is to keep us focused and allow the law to be proactive and productive in our lives. So it costs something in creative efforts. Adultery always costs something. And the seductress never lives up to her promise to tempt for a moment, offering the best of times is not sustainable for a lifetime. So whatever it is that's trying to seduce you away from your true purpose today, I encourage you, turn your eye to the law. Allow that to be focused in your life. Allow the commandments of your mother, your father, your God, allow them, allow those commandments to focus God's law into your life and speak to the situation that you're in and refuse the seductress and allow, allow what he calls the reproofs of instruction to become your way of life where you don't get offended, but you're grateful that someone cares enough about you today to call you out and say, hey, listen, you need to move back away from that guardrail. You're going to hit that thing. You're going to bust through it. And you're going to suffer some negative consequences. And you and I, we look at our friend, we look at our family member, we look at that one that has that kind of influence in our life, and we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, for caring enough about me to give me some reproof in these areas, allowing the light of God's law to be focused in my life. And ultimately, ultimately I'll be better I'll be a better man, I'll be a better woman, a better employee, a better employer, a better husband, a better mother, a better father, a better wife. I'll be a better person in society, a better friend, because I've allowed the instruction and the reproof of righteousness and the reproof of instruction to be active in my life. And I've refused the seductress and I've allowed the commandment to bring bring structure to the revelation that the law offers. All of that's right here in Proverbs chapter 6, and I believe that it can be a benefit and a blessing for your day today. God bless you. Have a great day.